Welcome back to the channel guys. I hope you're doing well today. In my previous video, I talked about the Bank of America trifecta setup, and this is a pretty solid setup, though it's not really a true trifecta. It's one premium rewards uh, card and then two no annual fee cash back rewards cards. And what makes this trifecta setup so good is their uh, preferred uh, rewards program. However, you might have been watching this video and having the same question that I did. Uh, Jackson Welsh left a comment, how do they make money from this? Having an IRA with them doesn't really make them a lot of money. So real quick recap, the preferred rewards program, it's a three-tier program where if you have a checking account with Bank of America and a three-month average uh, in your combined balances with all of your Bank of America accounts, and Merrill investment accounts, so this includes IRAs, 401ks, then you qualify for these tier statuses. The gold tier is if you have in all of your accounts a combined balance of between 20 and 50,000. Platinum tier is between 50,000 and 100,000. And then platinum honors is any account balance over $100,000. And we just talked about the credit card boost of 75% in the last video. However, there are other benefits. Unlimited ATM transactions, a 0.15% fee discount on uh, Merrill Investing, no fees on select banking services, a half percent interest rate reduction in an auto loan, $600 off your mortgage uh, for origination fee, and then a 20% interest rate boost on savings accounts. How does Bank of America still make money when giving all of these discounts to people with money? Especially on their credit cards, because if you get the cash rewards card and select dining, for example, as your cash back category, then for a no annual fee card, you're earning 5.25% cash back. That is unbeatable. That is unheard of. So how do they do it? How does Bank of America still make money off of you? We'll just cover in this video all the ways. The first one is if you do have a 401k IRA brokerage account with Merrill Investing, then potentially you could be using their uh, guided investing services or investing with an advisor. There is a small fee they charge you every year if you do, if you do that. However, if you're just on your own, if you're entirely self-directed, it is free to have a Merrill Edge investment account. Beyond that, there's all the other ordinary ways that banks still make money, mortgages, personal loans, account fees, ATM fees, penalty charges, application fees, commissions on options, there's still a fee for that, credit card interest, uh, and then the two that we're gonna focus on is interchange fees and uninvested cash. Now, let's pretend that you're wealthy. So if you have a lot of money, usually you're doing a lot of things. Your financial situation is a little complicated. So Bank of America is still gonna make money off of you just by the fact that you might have a mortgage, auto loan. Ideally, you're not carrying over a balance with this credit card, so you shouldn't be paying interest. Otherwise, there's no benefit to having the card. But the two things that we need to talk about is uh, interchange fees. So traditionally with a uh, credit card, the, the bank is making money off the vendors whenever you swipe their card, usually between one and 3%. So we can kind of deduct that by that 5.25% earning rate that you're making. So the bank is still net losing close to 3% on transactions when you use their card. So the other way that Bank of America makes money off of you is uninvested cash. There are people with emergency funds or cash holdings for whatever reason in a Bank of America checking or savings account. Yes, you get a boost at the Platinum Honors tier for your checking and savings, but it's still terrible. So if you have over 2,500 in uninvested cash in a ordinary uh, savings account, you're only earning 0.06% at the Platinum Honors tier, which is, is pretty atrocious. So when you hold your cash with Bank of America, they can then use that cash to loan it out for further auto loans, personal loans, whatever banks do to make money on their own. So they love it when you hold cash. But what if you uh, are rich and you're super smart and you don't uh, just leave 20, 30, 40, $50,000 in a savings account with Bank of America? What if you have it all in investments, IRA, 401k, whatever? How is Bank of America still uh, reducing the losses that they're experiencing from these cards? 
And this is where the math gets interesting. This is why I wanted to make this video kind of as a cautionary tale. Let's pretend you do have over $100,000, your Platinum Honors tier, and you have the Cashback Rewards No Annual Fee credit card with Bank of America. For your 3% cashback category, you select dining because you eat out a lot. And you also use this card for grocery stores and wholesale clubs. So your 3% becomes 5.25% cashback. Your 2% becomes 3.5. Just using my numbers comparable, let's say in a quarter, we're only looking at a, at a three month period, because there is a $2,500 cap on spend for these earning rates per quarter. So if you spend $300 a month dining out, $300 a month on groceries, $900, $900, dollars $1 total in a quarter, you did not exceed the $2,500 cap. Multiply your dining by 5.25, your uh, groceries by 3.5, your savings rate, your cashback rate is 4.38%. On a no annual fee card for those two categories, that's pretty good. So let's do the math now. If in a given quarter you choose to max it out, you want to hit that $2,500 cap. So you spend $4.16 a month on dining out, $4.16 a month on groceries, gets you exactly to $12.50, $12.50, $2,500 $12 in a quarter. Your cashback savings rate is still only 4.38%. So if you're using it for groceries, it kind of brings down your average a little bit and you're not quite getting the full 5.25%. But what happens now when you go over that $2,500 cap? It says in the fine print for this card that once you do that, you're only gonna earn 1% on purchases past 2,500 a quarter. I don't know 100% if the, uh, the boost still works. I'm gonna go ahead and assume it does. So your 1% cash back that you would normally get becomes 1.75. So let's say that once again, you're wealthy, uh, you're spending $500 a month eating at fancy restaurants, dining out, and your grocery bill is huge. You always shop at Whole Foods, 500 a month. So you're now spending $3,000 in these two categories in a given quarter. When you do the math, your savings rate actually decreases to 3.94%. So if you hit exactly the spending cap, 4.38%, when you go over, your average starts declining and Bank of America isn't losing as much money on you. Let's go ahead and now boost this another $100 a month in dining out and groceries. You're now $1,800, $1,800, $3,600 and a quarter. Your savings rate has now dropped to an average of 3.57%. And let's just take this example to the extreme and say for your given quarter, you chose home improvements and furnishings and you're about to spend $10,000 redoing a bathroom in your nice home. So you put it all on the credit card because hey, you're getting 5.25% cash back, right? No, you went way over that $2,500 cap for the given quarter. So you're only earning 1.75% on 75% of your spends this quarter. So your average savings rates using this card is only 2.63%. This is kind of a tricky way that credit cards um, appealing to large spenders, wealthy clientele, can save some money. You know, it's great PR, great publicity, you're getting 5.25% cash back. But then if people don't read the fine print, they don't pay attention to their credit card statements, they go they easily, because they're, they're high net worth individuals, they easily go over that quarter cap and then they're not actually earning as much back as they think they are. And I just wanted to point that out in this video. I just thought it was interesting. Obviously, if you are the kind of person who has a high net worth, you are a large spender, and you do pay attention to the fine prints, you can easily navigate around this. But I don't, I don't think that's what Bank of America assumes is happening for the majority of their customers who do qualify for the Platinum Honors tier. I think those people, once again, high net worth individuals, high spenders, they're not paying attention to that quarter cap and they're probably frequently going over it. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, consider subscribing to my channel. I talk a lot about credit cards. And if you have any questions or comments, leave me one down below. I love hearing from you guys. And until the next video, take care.